Hello and welcome back to another Giant Slayer TFT Synergies tier list video. Today our analysts will be ranking each synergy from S all the way down to the C tier for patch 12.5B. Yep, we're still trudging through the 12.5 patch, but the light is beginning to appear at the end of the tunnel as we're approaching the next patch 12.6. But before we get there, let's take a look at where the 12.5B meta ended up. Previously, our trait tier list was speculative on how the meta would end up. Now, with plenty of time played on the patch, there's a more concrete meta to talk about. It's also unlikely we'll see too many meta shifts from now to 12.6, so it's worth noting that regionals may shake up things depending on what strategies players have prepared. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT shows and tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come. Be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. All right, let's get back to the video. At the top of the list, we have the S tier, which consists of the traits Innovator, Socialite, Clockwork, Enchanter, and Mercenary. In general, the meta is more about individual champions that excel more so than particular synergies. That said, the S tier traits are played the most due to the top compositions utilizing them or because they're valuable splash traits. Kicking off the S tier, we have Innovator. Innovators remain one of the most consistent options in the meta thanks to how flexible the trait is with various carries. Aurelia, Jin, Draven, and more can all fit nicely and snugly onto an Innovator board. Mix that with a stellar early game that transitions easily into the mid game, it's no surprise to see Innovators being so consistent. Following right behind Innovators in terms of consistency is Socialite. For the most part, we see Socialite paired alongside Aurelia, but any carry can effectively use the synergy. Senna being both an Enchanter and Socialite helps a lot as it makes splashing Socialite in quite easy to do. Seraphine also helps with flexibility since she opens up the Innovator door. One thing to note is that a Socialite bug is being fixed in the minor final patch of 12.5. Bug fixes can have an impact on the viability of a Synergy or Champion, but we can't predict how much it will affect Socialite, so we're leaving it in the S tier. Largely thanks to Innovators, Clockwork has become one of the more consistent Synergies in the meta. But it's always been on the cusp of S tier in the mid set, so it's really no surprise seeing it go up in value. Orianna and Zillion add a lot of depth to the trait while Jin gets tossed in for a bit of extra damage and Camille is the perfect clockwork when playing Draven. As always, we have a spot for Enchanters due to how common a splash trait it is. Normally, we'd also have Scholars in this tier, but of the two, Enchanters are more consistent, particularly thanks to Senna. Finally, at the end of the S tier, we have Mercenary. We debated lowering it, but our original reason for having Mercenary so high on the list remains true super easy to cash out with mercs and that often leads to outright running the game. Just keep in mind you can't force it every game because eventually variants will catch up to you. With that we can move into the A tier which consists of the traits Twin Shot, Striker, Mutant, Debonair, Transformer, Bodyguard, Rival, Bruiser, Glutton, and Scrap. This is where the bulk of the meta is as all of these synergies have some part to play in the meta. First up is Twin Shot. Twin Shot is still doing quite well with multiple carries, perhaps even more so after the final 12.5 patch fixes a bug with Corky. But any Evolution, Gangplank, Corky, and Jinx can carry with this synergy, making it one of the most flexible in the meta. Striker swings up towards the top of the meta entirely thanks to Aurelia and partially Gnar. With just those two champions, you get two Striker and activate Socialite to put Aurelia on. Aurelia has made a huge impact on the 12.5B meta and will likely continue to do so as they're fixing a bug she has with occasionally getting mana locked. If you haven't already been utilizing Aurelia with Gnar, we highly recommend doing so. Normally we're conservative with our placement of Mutant, but Synaptic Web is too dang good to put lower than the A tier. Sure, the other mutations aren't anywhere as good, but quite a few of them are strong. At the end of the day, the mutation hard carrying Mutant is Synaptic Web, so enjoy it while it lasts because it's likely to see nerfs in 12.6. While Talon Reroll has fallen to the wayside and other Debonair Reroll boards aren't common, Debonair still has a place in the meta thanks to VIP Draven. Zeri does have a presence in the meta, but nowhere near as much as VIP Draven. That said, it does take a bit of luck to effectively play Draven, so the value of Debonair is often in flux depending on the items and augments the Draven player has. Near the middle is all reliable Transformer. Jace is fantastic in the late game and helps elevate innovators with both frontline and backline Jace being viable. The only issue is two-starring a Jace can be difficult, but even at level 1, he's impactful. Bodyguard may not be the only frontline in the meta anymore, but it's still one of the best thanks to Braum and Leona. The value of Bodyguard is also much higher thanks to Giant Slayer being a common item in the meta, as the additional defenses Bodyguard provides helps negate the bonus damage of Giant Slayer. Is that Jinx from Arcane? 
Yes, Rival is still doing well in the meta, specifically Jinx, and while Vi does have a place in some compositions, Jinx is more of an impact due to Twin Shot. Roosters may not be as high in value as Bodyguards, but they aren't too far behind. This is mainly due to a few reasons. One, they are really effective in Stage 2 and 3. Reason 2 is that quite a few boards utilize them, such as Warwick Reroll, Renata, and Mutant. What it really comes down is to options as bruisers are just another option to use besides bodyguards as neither synergy is absurdly higher in value than the other. As is typical, we don't talk about bruisers without talking about Tom Kench and Glutton. Tom Kench adds a lot of value to the board if the player finds him in stage 4. Beyond that, he goes down in value, though being able to temporarily remove a unit from the fight is always useful. And finally, we can end the A tier with Scrap. Scrap is in an interesting position within the meta. Early game is definitely good, particularly when paired alongside Innovator. Mid game, it begins to fall off, and late game, it's not particularly useful, but Aurelia is also one of the best carries in the meta. That means Scrap always has some relevance, though it's definitely not why Aurelia is so good. All those factors combined means we've bumped Scrap up from the junkyard of the B tier up into the slums of the A tier. Let's move on to the B tier, which consists of the traits Arcanist, Challenger, Assassins, Yordles, Chemtech, Sniper, Scholar Mastermind, and Enforcer. The rest of the meta falls into this tier, but mostly lacks consistency compared to the tier above, and its overall impact of these synergies is often smaller. The real glow up of the patch is Arcanist, as before we rated them down in the dog tier. While we're still not huge fans of the majority of Arcanist boards, we can't ignore that Ari is an effective carry and Arcanist helps enable her. There's also Malzahar to consider when Synaptic Web is in the lobby because his damage and utility go up dramatically with that mutation. Overall, this synergy still commutes with the struggle bus, but the bus is slightly nicer and the ride is less bumpy. Another trait we thought wouldn't be doing well is Challenger, but we're happy to be proved wrong. Draven and Warwick are definitely hard carrying the trait, but to be honest, Challenger is not the main reason for either of those champions' success. That said, we can't say Challenger isn't useful anymore because there are at least two viable carries to use it in the current meta. It's hard to say whether or not Assassin should be lower or higher on the tier list. Higher because somehow Twitch Innovator Reroll is still quite strong. It does lack consistency, which is why Assassin's is in the B tier. But outside of Twitch, there's really not any Assassin compositions to talk about other than the occasional Talon Reroll and when Kha'Zix does well with Mutants. Again, consistency is the key here, and Assassins are often lacking when it comes to that. Yordles are in a strange spot because Corky, Nar, and Vax are fantastic, but a full 6 Yordle board is rarely effective unless the player high rolls the so small augment. Even then, 6 Yordles is a risk. But 3? Three, 3 can do quite well, possibly even more so after the bug fixes. At the end of the day, we still mostly recommend Yordles for the extra gold in Stage 2, but all three of Corky, Nar, and Vex have a place in the meta, so there's certainly more to this trait than the gold it makes. Warwick and Twitch Reroll both raise the value of Chemtech in the meta by a lot, but with Renata still being on the weak side, Chemtech doesn't quite have as much staying power in the meta. It does rely heavily on Warwick, and Warwick is not a consistent carry. As it stands, Chemtech is not a bad synergy to use, but only use it in specific circumstances. It's tough to know where the value of Sniper is because the damage boost it provides is inconsistent. With Ash disappearing, the value of Sniper has gone down a lot even though Jin has become more common in the meta. But Jin is mainly used for a bit of extra damage and clockwork, meaning Sniper isn't helping. There is, of course, VIP Zeri to consider, but being a 5 cost means players won't see her utilized all that often. Overall, Sniper champions still have value in the meta, but the trade itself is questionable. Possibly the largest drop-off from the previous meta tier list to now is the Scholar Mastermind. We admittedly rated Silco a bit too high before because with all the nerfs we assumed his value would go up. While Silco still has a place in the meta, fewer players actively seek to use him on their boards in fear of him griefing the round by killing an important unit with his ability. That means if Silco isn't being utilized, neither is Scholar, especially with Renata still lacking consistency. At the bottom of the B tier, we have Enforcer. Where we've placed Enforcer is not indicative of the value it can bring. Need some extra utility late game? Enforcer is amazing for that, especially with an emblem. Problem is, how do you effectively add Enforcer to your board? The answer is difficult because Jace is the only consistently used Enforcer in the late game. Vi can have a place alongside Sejuani with Bruisers, but Bruisers tend to fall off late game, so rarely do players get the value of Enforcer. Overall, we do recommend using Enforcer if you can, but again, being able to find space in your composition for it may prove to be too difficult. And our final tier is the C tier, which consists of the synergies Syndicate, Hextech, Colossus, and Yordle Lord. While you will see these traits played occasionally, most of the time they aren't providing too much value to your board. The top trade of the bottom tier is Syndicate. 
Oh boy, were we off about Syndicate. Conservatively, we put them in the low A tier due to Ari and Ash possibly still utilizing the synergy, plus Morgana and Braum still being common frontliners. While Ari, Braum, and Morgana are viable, Ash essentially vanished from the meta entirely. Ari also no longer relies heavily on Syndicate, instead, she mainly gets played with Arcanist. That said, three Syndicates with Ari is still playable, so the synergy isn't completely dead in the meta. Hexec was mostly spot on for its initial placement, though we rated it slightly higher than its value ended up being in 12.5b. Early game is decent because of the low-cost champions, but beyond Stage 2, Hextech is barely noticeable. Lucian and Sivir are both capable carries in the current meta, but neither of them rely on Hextech. Not much change for Colossus, so we're still rating it all the way down at the bottom of the tier list. Jogath stocks have risen up a bit thanks to Mutant, but that doesn't help Colossus much in the meta. Maybe we'll eventually see the synergy get a bit of love, but for now, it's not particularly good beyond the units being slightly stronger. And our usual end of the tier list spot goes to Yordle Lord. Yep, Vygar is still a joke, even more so in the current meta, as six Yordles is quite rare. It's fine to completely ignore this trait until the end of the set. That's all we have for today's tier list video. Quite a few synergies were either much stronger or weaker than we predicted. As we mentioned earlier, a lot of the current meta is more about the champions, items, and augments more so than the traits. There's plenty of flexibility throughout the meta, so don't limit yourself to just a few synergies. Let us know in the comment section below what traits you've had the most success with in the very long 12.5b patch. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to like button subscribe for future Giant Slayer TFT videos.